I remember I had the gift for rap, I was saying like junior high school. I started taking it seriously at you know, about seventh grade, you know what I'm saying? I started to take the money that I was hustling with, you know what I'm saying? I was making off of hustling and I would take that money and put it into the studio. Stack saved your life in a way? No, he, he totally saved my life. He did something for me that nobody ever did for me, you know what I'm saying? Like he just showed me, he showed me how how to uh, stand behind your team, you know? Chase came to me like, yo, I need a car, I need to get up out the hood. I gave him money to get out the hood. He thought he was getting out the hood. He bought a crib three blocks down. He went and bought a crib like five blocks down from the hood. I knew it. it was a situation that he had in the past that had nothing to do with like. You don't know if it was a head out for you. You don't know if you did right. something wrong. You don't know what's happening. And you still gotta be around the same niggas. Just because you changed your life and you and you decide to do positive things and switch your whole life around, it doesn't mean that. That kid you, you know, you stole that candy from in fucking junior high school is not, they forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Rewind the clock and you really look at the nigga that killed Chinks was at the funeral. These are the type of situations that we live in. A rising star in the rap world dies just hours after performing a show murdered in an ambush in Queens. CBS 2 Steve Langford reports on the drive-by shooting that left a rapper killed. The 2015 Porsche the young rapper was driving about four Sunday morning in Briarwood, Queens, still running hours after the 31-year-old star was shot six times. The rapper, whose real name is Lionel Pickens, was pronounced dead at Jamaica Hospital. 31 years old, man. Go on. Pickens grew up in far Rockaway, Queens. His roots featured in his music videos as he gained fame as part of French Montana's Coke Boys group. Pickens played a show in Brooklyn Saturday night before being ambushed in his car, along with a passenger who was shot once and is expected to survive. There's a black Mercedes that, that came right next to that car and then they let off shots. Raymond Rivera says he saw the shooting from just up the block and watched as Pickens fell to the pavement. Police came, they put a blanket over him, ambulance came, they took him in the ambulance. Only a few hours after the early morning shooting, a major show of force by the NYPD here in Far Rockaway, Queens. Police took at least two men into custody here and are now questioning them in connection with the murder of the rapper. At the crime scene, a sobbing woman declined to speak, while friends and fans watched the scene in stunned silence. These were young kids, young kids that I watched grow up, man, as I just said, man. A rap music success cut down in his prime. Feeling very devastated. I'm really hurt. I'm really angry that we can't find the killer. The drive-by passed and ambushed us and started shooting up the car. I got shot, and when I got shot, I went down, and he jumped on top of me and took the rest of the shots. I got shot one time. He got shot probably like seven or eight times. They asked me everything that went down. I told them when I went down. I, I basically don't know nothing. I'm a victim. I didn't see anything. Like, I told them everything they need to know. Like, is like, I, would you want me to keep going back and forth to them, tell them the same story? I'm feeling very stressed out. I mean, a lot of people blame me for his death. And I'm really going through a lot. And look where I'm at. I'm in the store where I usually be at. I'm not, you know, I'm just trying to make it. And trust me, hopefully, in God, in God willing, we are find, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out who did it. Cause everything do come to the light. It's always gonna be long lived chinks. I don't care what people think. Bullet holes in Chinks' Porsche show the viciousness of the drive-by shooting that took his life on May 17th. One of those bullets struck 27-year-old Antar Alziati and pierced his lung. He believes Chinks shielded him and may even have saved his life. He says there was no third person in the Porsche, as was reported, and that Chinks was on his way home at the time. Police believe Chinks was the intended target. What's up, people? We is back. Another day on Keeper G News. And they are, we is in New York City, y'all, to cover a case that I think deserves more attention. I haven't even seen anybody cover, not even people from New York. And this is why we're in New York, because 
Something happened back in 2015, yo, with somebody that I thought was probably one of the better rappers back then, a guy by the name of Change Drugs. Now, Change Drugs was gunned down 2015, leaving the club performance on his way in the house, you know. And I always say that, yo, when you got these shoes that happen in the wee hours of the morning, it's like, yo, what you doing out there? But for Change Drugs, he was a rapper. And a lot of times you're a rapper, you got to play the club, so... It's all fair game when you live in that type of lifestyle, but you still got to make sure you're moving accordingly. Now, with Change Drugs, I don't actually think he thought he had any problems. But this is one of them situations where his problems came back to haunt him. And Change Drugs, at that time, he was signed on to French Montana. French Montana just caught his break. So it was just a matter of time for Change Drugs to catch his, especially when you can factor in. The boy can make some music. Niggas went left, but I made a right turn. Before you get left, better say the right words. Word. Niggas done came out them jacks. Fuck what they talking, they ain't about them checks. Ten white bricks rolling in the white pet. Fly young nigga, fuck whoever got next. Yay. Bunch of niggas all up in my business. I don't know. Y'all niggas might pull up to the venue. I'm with four, five bitches. Shipment that I'm waiting on. It got the coast guard tripping. Never traffic in no whip that got the own star system. Yo, I was hurt. I was hurt, yo. I was bumping shorty music every single day. I'm talking about the last every everything from the cocaine ride five to the with the, with the flight 911, whatever it was called, like man, Chinks Drugs had the style. Yo, he had the wordplay. He he knew how to string words together to make good bars. Like Shorty was one of the best rappers I thought at that time. I actually believe that if he would have survived, if he wouldn't have got killed in this manner, he would have been way bigger than French Montana, way bigger. Now that could just be me being an outsider, but. Shit, y'all heard the boss? I ain't never heard French Montana put out nothing like that. But this story isn't really about his music, you know, because, like I say, he was murdered. And two people was charged for his murder. Now, this is a charge that happened back in 2015. These guys didn't get arrested and formally charged in 2017, 2018. So, this is 2024. And the family has changed drugs, particularly his wife has been waiting for justice for all these years, yo. Imagine waiting nine years to get justice for your loved one being murdered, and then you don't really like the fact that you didn't really get justice. At least in her mind. The prosecution of the prime suspect in the murder of rising rap star Chinks. That day has come, and his brave widow tells me in this exclusive interview she can now finally heal from her loss. Homer and alleged accomplice Jamar Hill were charged with second-degree murder, attempted murder, and other charges in the 2015 murder of rising rap star Lionel Chinks Pickens Jr. Detectives say Homer was a shooter who pumped bullets into Chinks' Porsche, killing him. Seeing her husband's killer in court on Monday, making a guilty plea to manslaughter, was intense for his wife and mother of their three children, Janelle Caceres Pickens. It was pretty emotional. I, I literally cried the whole time sitting there, actually just staring at him. Because, you know, so many different thoughts and words are running through your head, and you know you have to keep your composure. He was doing so well, they were looking at houses to buy for their family. It's been tough for Janelli, realizing one man with a gun and an old grudge took it all away. A lot of sadness, a lot of hurt, a lot of anger. Um, you know, the DA sat with me most of the time until it was time for him to you know, represent um, as I was there by myself. So it was a lot. Over the last nine years since she lost the love of her life, Janelli started a catering business, went to school, started a new career in healthcare, and raised their children. We all believe that it should have definitely been at least a murder charge. Quincy Homer took a guilty plea to first degree manslaughter and is looking at 23 years behind bars already doing time on a federal armed robbery conviction. In a statement, Queens DA Melinda Katz says, my office never gives up in our pursuit of justice. Lionel Pickens, an accomplished recording artist, was senselessly gunned down by Quincy Homer. We hope that this sentence will provide the Pickens family with some measure of comfort as they continue to mourn his loss. Janelli is grateful for the work done by police and prosecutors. It's closure for us to now know that there's 
there's no more court appearances after this. There's, you know, someone is being held accountable for what has happened. So it's a start. I don't know the details of this case. I, I read a little bit up on it, but they don't really specify why the crime got changed from uh, second degree murder to first degree manslaughter. Now, the wife seems to think the laws in New York, because I know if this happened in Maryland, that would have been a first degree murder charge off the rip. It was premeditated. He was followed. He was stalked. What constitute a first degree murder in New York, or at least second degree murder? Maybe that's their first degree. I don't know. But she think he deserved life in prison. Because she, they took somebody from her that didn't deserve to be taken, y'all. We talking about a beef that started all the way back in 2009, y'all. 2009. So this guy waited all these years. I think it was a back and forth they had a couple years prior after prison. But it started in prison when Chinks Drugs went back in 2009 for a probation violation. And then they had another dispute in the club. But this just seemed like a situation where hate played the major role. Dude couldn't factor, or he couldn't fathom the fact that Chinks Drugs was on his way out because he definitely was. He had the backing. French Montana would have made sure, had, sure of it. Look where he is now. Chinks Drugs would at least been somewhere close. I think he'd have passed him. And since they had this little dispute, whatever it was about, in the prison and in the club afterwards, he couldn't let it go. He couldn't fathom that this man that I had problems with may be a millionaire soon. So I got to get him while he's still available. And that's what he did, yo. And the family seems to think that they didn't get justice because they think he should have got life. Now, he's only getting 21 years in prison. He's currently locked up for 18 years in federal prison anyway. So I don't know if this 21 going to run consecutively. More than likely it is because I don't think state and fair time can run together. So... I think the state probably just looked at it, you know, the state of New York probably looked at it like, yo, he is done anyway. He done any. He still got 18 years, basically a fresh 18, maybe six in with the feds. Then he got to do 21 when he come home. It's basically a life sentence. But let me know how y'all feel about this in the comments. Do y'all remember Change Drugs, man? Do y'all think that he would have been bigger than French Montana if he would have survived? Do y'all think this was justice? If y'all was in this situation wait, waiting nine years to see the fate of somebody that's accused of murdering one of your loved ones, would 21 years be sufficient? Let me know in the comments, man. It's another day of Keep It G News. Nigga can't do what I do. Y'all niggas can't copy me. Let's keep shit G. Let's keep shit G. Let's keep the shit G. Let's keep shit G. Let's keep shit G.